Thank you so much for downloading, streaming, and thank you so much for listening here to the Sacramento Kings podcast presented by HoopBall and the HoopBall Podcast Network. Welcome in. I am Damian Barling. Your Sacramento Kings get a win tonight in the nation's capital, 113 to 106 to improve to 7-8 and eight on the season. Uh, we will break down this game for you, give you the highs and lows, give you the sound uh, from Kings head coach Luke Walton as well Uh, welcome all those new to the program welcome those who are subscribers and listen after each and every single game we greatly appreciate it if you're a regular listener uh, please make sure you hit the five star review if you think you're worth it if we're not worth the five star review give us the four give us the three let us know what you want us to improve you can reach us here at the text line at 916-888-5898 but uh if you enjoy listening to the show please leave us that five star review uh goes a very very long way and if you could drop us a line or two about what you think of the show again we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Curious your thoughts on tonight's Kings game as well. Again, 916-888-5898. The Sacramento Kings get the win, 113-106. to 106. Uh, As I mentioned, and there was, a, there, there was a couple of notes that I took early in the game, or really in the first quarter, the, the very beginning of the first quarter, looking at this like, okay, the Kings are making it a point to score in the paint early. And it was kind of like, okay, are they going to keep this up? Is this... Uh, their game plan against the Washington Wizards, and it, it it very much was. They were running a lot. You go back and you watch that first quarter. That first quarter set the tone. This was a really, this was a consistent game. With the exception of three-point shooting, uh, it, it, this was a, it an incredibly, the Kings had a game plan, and it seemed that they they executed it, felt like, to perfection throughout the course of the game. Uh, again, the, the three-point shot didn't fall in the first half. It certainly did there in the second, but their plan against Washington was to score in the paint and you go back and you watch that first quarter over again and you see them set that tone they're running a ton of cuts to the basket uh they're running a bunch of post-up plays and it was funny because the Wizards were kind of doing the same thing they were they were really matched in terms of points in the paint like with through the entire game uh they they were just neck and neck in that one singular category uh they wound up the 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 Washington Wizards wound up uh outscoring the Kings in the paint 52 to 46 but that's because the Kings three point shot started to fall. And when they needed a dagger, uh, that dagger came uh, in the form of a three ball. So we'll, we'll lay out all of these storylines. You go back to that first quarter. I, I guess the important note is uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich returned to the floor at about the six minute mark of the first quarter. He seemed to be moving well. I was watching him probably a little too closely. He's like, oh, is he laboring? And when he backpedals, is he struggling on his cuts on defense? No, he didn't seem to struggle at all. As a matter of fact, he hit one of the biggest shots of the game. Uh, but this game was very, it was very close. It was very even. They kind of just went back and forth at it the entire game. The Wizards took a, a 27 to 24 lead into the second quarter. The Kings opened up, and the, you know the story of the second quarter was just runs. Uh, who who was on the run in that particular moment? Kings opened up the second quarter with a 12 to two run. The Wizards uh, they used a run of their own to pull even at 43. Uh, another run gave them a 52 to 45 lead. It was a 14 to two run to be exact. Immediately following that, 12 straight for the Sacramento Kings. We're all tied at the half. Uh, a couple of notes there, specifically from the first quarter, or excuse me, specifically from the first half. Uh, they were five of 16 from the line, which I thought was was like okay. Kings getting to the foul line. I absolutely love that. Uh, the rebounding and field goal percentages between the Wizards and the Kings was pretty much dead even. And as, as we noted there just a moment ago, the difference in the first half of the game was the Wizards were hitting the three and the Kings were not. Uh, the the Wizards had hit seven threes. Uh, the Kings had only hit two there uh, at that point. Now, the, the seven to two, it's, it's, it's an advantage. Certainly, the seven three-pointers, that's not like a breakneck number. It's not like you're looking at the goal. Oh, my gosh, how are the Kings going to come back from that? But... Remember, you you take the conversation in its totality. You take the first half in its totality, and you realize, okay, the Kings have a, a, a negative five differential in terms of made threes, and it's a tie ball game. It shows you that they were doing a lot of other things on the floor, right? And you know, this is a phrase that isn't uttered very often this year, but the third quarter belonged to the Kings. They outscored the Wizards in this one, uh, thirty-three to twenty-eight. Uh, the Wizards. Three-point shooting, it fell off a little bit here in the third quarter. And the Kings, it started to pick up. And it was one of those games where, and this is where I feel that this team, this Sacramento Kings team is different 
you know, even as recently as last year's team, and certainly, you know, you, you go back and you look at the many different teams, you could see games like this one where Kings have an advantage. They're up the whole game. And and really that, that that was essentially the case. There were no there were no big leads in this game. No no team was really able to create distance. Uh, the biggest lead for the Wizards was seven. Uh, biggest lead for the Kings was nine. So neither team pulled away. And there were moments where you know even late in this game where it got within two, it got within three. The Kings are up just a few. And I feel like in times past, teams past, this is you 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 could see the Kings fold this game. You could see the pressure mounting a little bit. You could see, you know, those those mistakes just kind of snowball into more mistakes, more mistakes, more trouble, and suddenly uh, that three point lead that they had is now a four point, uh, you know, a four point disadvantage. I feel like they've been able to close out games significantly better this year. I feel like they have withstood runs from their opponents significantly better this year. And I know that we're talking about a team that's seven and eight right now, but we're also talking about a team that started 0 and five. So I I think there there's a lot of positives to take away. And just you look at you look at each, you know, game in the microcosm of the season, right? You just you just take different aspects of each game and go, well, what did they do in this game that looks differently than what they did in games in the past. I thought their second half defense was really good. I thought their fourth quarter defense was fantastic. Uh, there was a play, you know, I might be alone on this. It sure looked like Isaiah Thomas was fouled on that three point attempt there at the end of the game. I thought the refs missed it or not at the end of the game, but I think it was, with, you know, under two minutes to go. Isaiah Thomas, I, I thought he was fouled on that three point attempt. Refs didn't call it. Bogey came down. He hit his third three of the game and that was it. You know, as close as the game had been there in the fourth quarter, as much as Washington had battled back, battled back, battled back, they had tried to get themselves in that game. They could never get over the hump. They got close, but they never got over the hump. But the, that was the play that kind of was like, all right, that's it. Bogey's third three right there, putting into it. And that was the big shot. That was the dagger. Um, and again, of note, the, the, the threes in the uh, first half, two. Uh, threes in the second half, nine. That was the difference. That was the difference. That three ball started to fall. And the Kings' defensive effort, again, this is a theme of the season. The Kings' defensive effort was there for all four quarters. I think they have played extraordinarily well uh, since that 0-5 start on the defensive end. Uh, Luke Walton preached patience. He pre and I and I I was frustrated. I was I, I was frustrated after the Charlotte game. I think a lot of us were frustrated after the Charlotte game. I think some of us saw some uh, positives coming out of the game uh, against Denver. Uh, I, I think we saw okay, all right, th- th- that's okay. We'll carry this over into the Charlotte game and good to go here. And then of course they come out and they lay an egg against Charlotte. And that I feel like in this early part of the season that was the low point. That game against Charlotte was a game that that. that the, the, the Hornets did not play well in that game. I do not believe that they are a better team than the Sacramento Kings. Uh, and that was the moment, that was the that was the shift for the Kings as they got that, you know, incredible first win at the Golden One Center a couple of nights later. And then, you know, here we are now, uh, 15 games into the season, 10 games later, uh, with a 7-3 and three record since that 0-5 start again, 7-8 uh, on the season. Here's the, you know, good news, bad news. You play the teams that are on your schedule, right? You, you don't really, it doesn't really matter. Every every team in the NBA, they they play every other team in the NBA. There, there's nothing scientific about this. It's, it's very simple. It's a tried and true formula that's been going on forever. So you don't really look at them and go, well, they beat the Wizards. Big deal. Well, their records aren't that far apart. You know, the Wizards entered this game at five and eight. The Kings entered the game at six and eight. That's not a big difference. Uh, but I don't believe that the Wizards are very good. I think Bradley Beal is... Uh, having a hell of a year because he has to he has no other choice he has to carry this team uh, on his shoulders I think Isaiah Thomas is it's it's really nice one to see Isaiah Thomas on the floor it's nice to see Isaiah Thomas playing you know big minutes uh for a team out there and he's playing you know relatively well Uh, I I thought the Kings did a good job of of denying him all all of the uh, shots that he took you know, for the most part, were contested. I think they frustrated him a little bit. Uh, he wasn't able to get free. He was only 6 of 11. I don't think he took nearly as many shots as he wanted to. But same thing with Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal had 20 points on 8 of 18 shooting. I think they frustrated Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal is the second leading scorer in the NBA. He's behind James Harden. I think the Kings did a fantastic job of, 
of 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 shutting Bradley Beal down and uh, denying Isaiah Thomas the opportunity to to get going and to get hot. And so you've got this game on your schedule, all right? You've, you're in the nation's capital, and now you've got a team coming up tomorrow. We're going to be right back here immediately following the Kings and the Celtics. Like you got a team, you're headed to Boston. You just beat them on, and in, in, in maybe the game of the year so far for the Kings. And they've they've had a couple of great ones so far this year. But that game against Boston, and maybe I'm a little biased because I was there, but that was a hell of a ball game. And I'm I'm confident the Celtics took note in that game. And I'm confident that they've been studying the film and, and, and they're ready for another one. They're ready for another crack at the Sacramento Kings. That doesn't mean nothing. Just because they're ready for another crack at them doesn't mean that they're going to be able to beat them. They defended the Boston Celtics as well as anybody has defended them this year. And I think I've seen all but maybe two of their games so far this season. Uh, I think the Kings did a fantastic job. They played the Celtics uh, better perhaps than anybody else uh, in the league so far has, and that includes the Philadelphia 76ers at the beginning of the season. Uh, now that the, now that the Celtics have got going a little bit, now that the Kings have got going a little bit, I'm really excited to see how this one plays out uh, tomorrow night. So the Kings win the first night of a back-to-back against Washington, one in 13, uh, uh, 113 to 106. It's going to be their first crack, uh, or, or their next crack, I should say, to, to get at that 500 mark. And imagine the Kings getting to 500 by sweeping the Boston Celtics. Let's hear what Luke Walton has to say after the Kings' latest victory. Uh, Harrison was uh, was great, and we needed him. And, and that's a uh, a team that is uh, really tough to defend. And I really think uh, our defense in that second half. We, you know, the first half was 57 all. Everyone was scoring whenever they wanted. And the, the challenge to the group at halftime was let's let's see if we can't continue to score, but actually get some stops. Uh, you know, let's let's try to put our will uh, on this game. And I think our guys did a really nice job in the second half of playing defense. It really felt that their defense really didn't give you guys any kind of resistance in the paint or at the rim. And I felt like Barnes and, and Holmes did an excellent job. Was that a key for you guys tonight? Yeah, we talked about uh, before we wanted to make sure we want to break the paint. We, 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 we call it breaking the paint. And, and that's at that point, whether we kick it out for a shot or, or go to shoot we're fine as long as that's the mentality we have um, and that's normally the nights we shoot the best is when we're being aggressive uh, so it was a it was uh, a theme for us all all the time but even more so uh, you know going into the night's game trying to get back on track you guys struggled again from from three in the first half but I felt like the ability to get to the free throw line really made a difference and you guys end up shooting 28 on the night yeah it was um you know again something we we talk about and we we need to continue to get better at um part of that is is tough with darren going out and marvin going out i mean those are two guys that can get to the rim and and get fouled uh harrison's pretty elite at it uh but yeah the, the free throw battle is a big part and in some close games we've lost we've got crushed in the free throw uh uh battle the and, and tonight we uh, we did a much better job of that, and a lot of that, like you said, goes to Harrison uh, and Rashawn being aggressive and putting that pressure on the rim. What's the challenge with going to Boston tomorrow night? You know, it's a back to back. You got some injured guys. What, yeah. what, what, what? How tough is that for these guys? It is. I mean, yeah, it's always a challenge going into that place and playing. Uh, and, you know, them being uh, one of the best teams in the league makes it more of a challenge. And you know, we got to see how. Uh, you know, Bogey's feeling. Maybe Bogey can't go tomorrow night. You know, we got to adjust again. So, uh, you know, it's it's not ideal, but it's it's the the, the challenge and opportunity in front of us, and we got to um, we got to be ready for it and, and try to embrace it and see if we can't uh, get another win. But he was able to get to the free throw line, and that's something he's not always able to. Yeah. do. And he's been struggling with his shot the last couple of games. Just how important was it for him to get to the line? And start to see the shots. Fall yeah, there. I, I think it's a good thing for him to, to to feel and see. Whenever a shooter misses some shots, it's uh, it, it's normally as easy as getting to the line and, and watching one or two free throws go in to get a shooter hot again. And uh, you know, I think that helped Buddy tonight. Uh, and something that as he continues to grow as a player, I think uh, he'll recognize and try to you know try to make that part of his game when the, when the shot's not going in. But I thought Buddy, after struggling in the first half uh, to make shots, I thought he came out second half defensively um, and offensively and played a very, very good half for us. The Hill field ten below his average. What was working so well there tonight? Well, it, it, that was, you know, uh, defensively, 
we, you know, he, he's the thing that makes this team go. And last game in Brooklyn, we uh, we messed up by letting you know Harris get hot early, and we paid the price. Uh, so our team, uh, our our team thought process tonight, and Corey Joseph did a great job of kind of setting the tone for us. Was everything it takes not to let Bradley get going? And uh, you know, he obviously he has some shots he normally makes, but I do think our guys did a nice job of of uh, making him work for everything. So often Luke Walton goes and does those press conferences and I feel like he addresses some of the things that we talk about at the very open of the podcast. You just heard him obviously talking about uh, taking away Bradley Beal. That's not really, uh, I, I think we, you know, all of us coaching from home, we can put that together on our own. If you could take away the second leading scorer in the league, the leading scorer for that team and really uh, kind of the heartbeat of what the Washington Wizards have been able to be this year without John Wall, then yep you're going to be pretty successful if you're able to do that. Not always easily executed, uh, but you're going to be successful if you're able to do that. Uh, I also, I I thought it was interesting. I thought his remarks about Bogdan Bogdanovich were interesting. Um, How healthy is Bogey? I mean, you know, he obviously missed the Brooklyn game. He, he, you know, he, he attempted to, uh, he was insisting, oh, it's, 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 it's not bad. I just, I wanted to finish the game and, you know, all of that, and it was like, ah, oh, it, it didn't feel like it was a big deal, and then the Brooklyn game comes around, obviously he doesn't play, he gets out there, he plays against, uh, he plays against uh, the the Washington Wizards tonight, and you hear Luke Walton say, well, we'll have to see how he feels tomorrow, and I guess that's just the, the day-to-day monitoring of, of players in general, specifically one who, you know, who's, who's obviously dealing with something here. Uh, at this particular moment. And I wouldn't have guessed, again, I, I was probably watching him a lot closer than I needed to. I wouldn't have guessed Bogdan Bogdanovich was feeling any ill effects uh, from that hamstring injury. I mean, he had 21 points. And I, I haven't done a good job of of stating how much how much this game was really about Harrison Barnes. Uh, Harrison Barnes was great on both sides of the ball. And it's not all, often that he is uh, a major difference maker offensively. It like he, he, you know, and and I'm not, I'm not saying he's one of those guys who's only plays defense, but I'm talking about a major difference maker offensively. Often we're looking at Buddy uh, in that category. We're looking at Bogdan Bogdanovich in that category. Uh, but tonight it was about Harrison Barnes. He had just the most twenty six of the just the most efficient twenty six points imaginable. He was seven of eight from the field, and I, and I could be wrong, but I think he hit his first seven. Uh, he was three of three. Uh, from behind the arc, and he was 9 of 11 uh, from the free throw line. Uh, Rashawn Holmes, uh, he continues to play well. He was 7 of 9 from the field, 16 points, 10 rebounds. Nice little double-double for him. Uh, Nemanja Bialica, again, uh, you heard Luke Walton at the beginning of that press conference that, you know, we, 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 we talked about breaking the paint. That's exactly what they did, and, and even though shots weren't falling for Nemanja Bialica, uh, he managed to gather up uh, 12 rebounds again. Not, not a stellar, not a stellar night for him, but he was attempting to contribute uh, while he was out there, while the shot wasn't falling, he was making some careless plays there with the basketball. But I, as you know, as we were talking about Bogey before, you know, switching gears to Harrison Barnes, he played 28 minutes, which okay, no signs of anything ill there. Uh, seven of six from the field, three of nine from three point range. He had 21 points to go along with four assists and four rebounds. So I guess we'll find out tomorrow. I guess we'll find out tomorrow how. How Bogey is 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 feeling. We just mentioned Rashawn Holmes and the double double that he had. Let's check in with him. To get back, load our defense, and make it tough on them. Rashawn, you guys put a tremendous amount of pressure on their defense tonight, getting the free throw line, really attacking them. Was that something that you guys started out the game saying, "Hey, this is where you're worried about the focus"? We definitely, just wanted to attack. We're always looking to put pressure on the rim first. You know, and uh, that gives us our three point opportunities, and then everything is at your at your fingertips. So definitely, always want to put pressure on the rim, and uh, we were able to get to the foul line tonight. So it's always a good thing. We were just there for each other, you know. Uh, like I said, they have a lot of guys who can score the ball over there, and so uh, we just wanted to come out, you know, guard and be there for each other. And I think we did a pretty good job helping each other out tonight. Oh man, he, he's the head of our snake on defense. You know, he goes out there and puts pressure on the ball handlers. He guards the best player of the whole game. 
And, uh, you know, he just makes it extremely, extremely tough on anybody he's guarding. So he definitely kicks our defense off with the pressure, and we need him to do that for us every night. You know, it's, can't put into words what he's bringing to this team. It's Rashawn Holmes right there. Again, the Kings uh, have their next chance to get to 500 when they take on the Boston Celtics tomorrow in Boston. Of course, we will have coverage for you uh, immediately uh, following that game. They've got the 76ers to wrap up the road trip coming up on Thanksgiving Eve. And then they'll return to the Golden One Center to take on Denver and Chicago. Appreciate you, as always, for tuning in here. Uh, Tell all your friends that are Kings fans to check out the Sacramento Kings podcast presented by HoopBall and the HoopBall Podcast Network. As soon as you exit out of the program, uh, hit that five-star review again. We greatly appreciate it. And we're not going to be gone very long. We'll see you again here uh, early tomorrow evening. I believe we got another 430 start there uh, in Boston. So immediately following that game, we'll have a new podcast up for you. So uh, we'll be back. Kings, they get the win tonight, 113 to 106. They move to 7 and 8. We'll see you tomorrow night after the Kings and the Celtics.